In this video, you're going to be seeing a bunch of really good items that I picked up on a trip to my local dump. Now, the first one that you're looking at here is a high voltage switch. This is rated 600 volts. You turn it this way. Over here it says 600 at 16 horsepower and here it says 110 volts at 3 horsepower. 16 amp rating at 600 volts. This is a cam lobe switch and you can see right in here hopefully that plastic lobe as you rotate the handle the lobe moves into different positions and as it does you have these contacts just like you have in a relay and they open and close. So if you look right there when I rotate it the lobe on this one will close this contact. See that? Right there. Closed, open, closed, open. And you can see this one doing the opposite. That one opened up and that one closed. And there's a whole bunch of settings on this. So this is a really useful switch for something considering it's designed to handle a lot of current. I also came across a nice little toaster oven. It was stainless steel and it looked like it was brand new. So I took the heating element out of it. Nothing wrong with it. I already powered it up to make sure the outside brass or steel coating is in great shape. You can see the insulating material between the resistive wire and the outer jacket of the heating element. This one right here is rated and it's on that side I think. There it is. 120 volts, 1200 watts. So another good find. I found some equipment that had a couple of 10 microfarad 220 volt capacitors. I tested these and they're within the value of plus or minus 5%. This one was right around 9.5 microfarad. And I found another one here, also 10. Very rarely do I come across 10s. Usually I come across 2, 3, 4, and 6. Not too often do I see a 10. So this was really good to find. And this also is within its range, within 5%. I came across a whole bunch of microwave ovens. And I have so many microwave oven transformers and fans and everything else that I really have no more need for parts from them. So what I'm doing now is just on site, just disassembling the magnetron and popping off all the ring magnets. So I was able to pick up one, two, three ovens and I got six magnets. Now I found this, this was on a computer, very large heat sink, nice color blue, like an electric blue, and processor was right here, over here was some other components, and it was clipped in, and there was also some screws. What I could do with this is I can cut this with the hacksaw straight across, and once it's cut, I could drill a hole and tap it with maybe a 632 tap, and I could use this for transistors or large MOSFETs or even a bridge rectifier. I could get at least three nice heat sinks out of this, so this was a good find. Also came across an old barbecue grill. This is the Piezo electric starter, the electronic ignition. So when you push that, you can see it jump, hopefully. We go there. See that? All right. This works well. I could use this for projects to ignite gases or other things. It's very interesting because I could also show you the amount of current that you get out of this is a few milliamps, even though it's very high voltage. Let me take an LED to show you. Amazingly, it does not kill the LED. Spread that apart. All right. You would think it would automatically just destroy the LED, but it doesn't because the current's low enough that it won't damage it. My hand to shade it. 
See right there. Pretty neat. I'll definitely find use for this. Now I also came across a fill valve on a dishwasher. These are very good to have. If I'm working on a project, I want to have water turned on and off. I'll now have that ability. 120 volt solenoid, little plunger in here, and that allows the water to go in and out. I also came across a very nice rheostat. This is a high wattage Series A. These are not cheap. They probably sell between $20 and $50, depending on the rating of it. Now, I do have a video showing where I used a larger one like this to override the rotor current on my alternator for my induction generator. If you'd like to check out that video, it's in the link right here. When you click on that link, a new window will open. You can pause the video and go back to it after you're finished watching this one. Here's another smaller one that I found. Thinner wires, so a lot less current. Everything's still good on it, the spring. And it rotates fine. Made by Ohmite Manufacturing Company. And it looks like Skokie, Illinois. I did manage to also come across a very nice switch mode power supply. This was removed from a satellite box. All the voltage outputs shown here do work just fine. I checked them. Components all look good, except there is one capacitor right over here. You can see it. It's domed. That's getting ready to go. The ESR must be very high. I'm going to desolder that, throw it away, pop in a new one, and I'll have this for other projects. Here's a really good one. I've never come across a bulb this big. It's huge. All right, here's my hand. I mean, the bulb is just huge. And I had no idea what size it was. The base is a mogul, which is extremely large. It has that cobalt type glass. And I tried looking on the base. Usually you might see a voltage rating right over here. Couldn't find anything like that along the bottom edge. Looking for any writing that might have worn off at the top. There was nothing. See how nice the inside looks. So what I did, using my load lamp device, I was able to discover that this is a 24 volt lamp. I checked it out using 24 volts. Lights up very bright and it works great. I would think this came from a street light from many years ago. It was in a pile of trash really buried and the housing was really beat up but the socket amazingly looks perfect these are probably expensive to buy for that size and if you look at it it says right here pulse rated 5000 volts 1500 watts 600 volts so this holder really was not even for this bulb somebody must have modified it because this is definitely 24 volts Interesting, I might be able to make maybe a plasma globe out of it. Who knows, another project possibly in the future. Found this electronic ballast. It's a 120 volt input, 830 milliamps, and it just has the two wires going to your two pin fluorescent tube lamp. Now I did try this and it doesn't work. So I popped it open. It's really a nice housing, so I could use this for other projects in the event I can't fix this. I could just pop out the inside like you see here. There's a couple of switching transistors, TO220s, one there, another one down there, and there's a TO92 right there. Capacitors look good. I don't see any burning. All the components look all right. Before I trash this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to test out these transistors it says Q1, Q2, so I'm taking it as a transistor. Make sure that they're not burned out, and I'm also going to check that one out. If they all test okay, I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to pull all these transformers and all the components and save them. Here's something really neat that I can make a generator out of. This right here was inside of a microwave oven vent fan. Now, this was the one that mounts on your wall above your stove. It had a squirrel cage here and here, and I ended up taking this apart yesterday when I got home because it didn't work properly. The motor did run, 
but it was getting very hot using the proper capacitor and everything at different speed settings it just wasn't working well so what I did is I cut away on one side with the hacksaw all the copper windings and then I tapped them all the way through and I was able to keep a really nice rotor which you can see right there with all the keepers in perfect shape so what I'm going to do with this when I have some time it unscrews the whole thing just comes apart beautifully the bearings are perfect I could hold this and give that a spin it'll spin a very very long time stop it I'm gonna make this a four pole motor north south north south using neodymium magnets and I'm going to wind four poles inside the stator and make this a either a wind generator or some sort of a crank generator so this will definitely not go to waste all right I also came across a very nice rheostat high wattage all I had to do was wire brush everything get it nice again there is a little bit of rust damage here but it doesn't make a difference because this part that makes contact with the flat part of the winding here has its own wire connecting to the center tab I checked it out works great these are very expensive these high wattage 5 ohm rheostats so this was a very good find I also found this adapter it goes from a mogul base to a standard this will go perfectly inside the socket that I found with the 24 volt bulb this was a really good find three of these were inside boxes DSL routers this one right here has no Wi-Fi I checked it they all have power cords with them works perfect this right here has the Wi-Fi great find also came across this nice hand pump works perfect I'll find use to that that was inside of a box which contained a really nice US divers mesh bag nothing wrong with it I don't know why they threw it away pretty foolish also came across two of these Bakelite fuse holders this is really good quality one screw in the middle put your fuse and you have your brass screws you can put your blade or ring connectors on and you are good to go also found this switch it looks like it's from the late 50s or early 60s it's a four position you have off low medium and high this one you pull it and then you rotate it then it locks in pull it and it locks in very heavy duty I think it's rated around 50 amps. Let's take a look. There's a little hairline crack on the outside, but it's no big deal. 50 amps at 125 volts, or 5 amps at 440. I bet that cost a pretty penny when it was new. Now here was the mother load of the trip. This is worth between $100 and $150, or more actually, if you buy it brand new. I came across, look at this a treadmill somebody threw away a treadmill and the motor is absolutely perfect on it this one here it's a US made motor by Icon Health and Fitness out of Logan Utah it's a US made motor one and a half horse at 95 volts and external fan I'll show you that in a minute 21.4 amps permanent magnet DC motor this will make a great generator crank generator or wind generator and if you look for these on eBay, they, like I said, they're very expensive. Look at the condition of this thing. It's absolutely perfect. I'm going to unscrew this. We're going to take a look at the inside in a minute. Now the blue wires, this blue wires right here, this goes to a thermal overload protection, a thermal switch, the two blue wires. So this would be connected in series with the power wires. So in case this gets too hot, it will automatically shut down. You have the red for the positive and the black for the negative. And the beauty of this, it's extremely easy to change the brushes out. The clip pops off. You can access the brushes and pop them right back in. One on each side. You can see the magnet there. 
little hard to see. I'm going to open it up. You'll see a lot more in a minute. It spins beautifully. There was a very nice flywheel also on here. And the purpose of that flywheel is when the motor starts up, it will draw more current. It'll take more energy to get that flywheel spinning. But once that flywheel is spinning, there's a lot of kinetic energy that's stored within that flywheel. So if there's any variations in speed with the motor, or if there's a load put on the motor, what will happen, instead of, the, instead of the motor slowing down and you seeing those changes in speed, the flywheel will allow the motor to have a smoother transition of speeds. So it will smooth everything out. Let me show you that flywheel. Here it is. All right, cast iron. I might even use this or something similar on my 40 watt crank generator which is really really good it works amazing if you want to check that 40 watt crank generator video out with a super cap bank check out the video in the link right here as I said earlier the link will open in a new window once it opens in a new window you can pause the video player continue watching this video and when this one's completed you can go back to that video this threads on here I think it's a backwards thread. Yep, it is. All right. Now you see that? You spin that. That flywheel has a lot of mass. So when you keep spinning it, it's not threaded on all the way, it's just partially. So it's very hard to slow that down when the speeds change. Now this pulley here is smaller. The one that the belt was connected to the conveyor belt that you would jog on. That was a larger pulley, so you had this belt going to a pulley about that big, which rotated the entire belt that you jogged on. Really, really neat. This is a great, great find, and I'm sure I'll find good use for this. This was very interesting. This I found in an old gas pump. There must have been a gas station that was being renovated and they threw away the pumps. I took out a whole bunch of relays too, which are not in this video. You can see there's writing there, but you're not going to be able to see it. It says General Electric and has all the specs. I'll try and read it to you. Model, has the model number. Horsepower. Horsepower is one-tenth. RPM is 3,300. So there is a decent amount of slip on this motor. Volts 115. Amperage, I could read it, is hmm, 1.4. Time rating, 8 minutes. So it's not a continuous motor, that's fine. Capacitor is a 20 microfarad. I did check this. I put a 20 microfarad capacitor after playing around with the wires. I found out that yellow went to hot, the blue and the red right here went to the capacitor, and the red also goes to the neutral. Once I hooked them up, it rotated perfectly. I got good speed out of this. You can see I'll rotate this. It's very slowly turning on that side. And I calculated 56 to 1. This has to spin 56 times to get one full rotation out of this one. I'm going to unscrew this. We're going to take a look at the other side. Hopefully there's no fluid in it. It's going to pour out. I wouldn't be surprised if there was. only because there's a decent gasket here. Let me hold it this way. What I'm going to do is after I take the screws off, I'm going to hold it upright and then you'll be able to see it again in the camera. This is made by Performance Pack. Saginaw steering gear. Division of General Motors. All right, let's see. All right, let me just hold it like this for a minute. 
She's not coming off too nice. Let me tap it all the way around. Well, I hear the sound changing. That sounds pretty good. Let's tap this side. There she's off. All right. Oh, I hope there's no liquid in there. All right, so it's got plastic gears. Whole bunch of grease in there. Does appear to be well made. Let's spin that. Pretty neat. Let me put this back together and then we're going to take apart the treadmill motor and see what that looks like on the inside. Alright, so it's all connected up. Headlamp bulb draws around 3 or 4 amps. We'll check that in a minute. While this is all connected and the light's running, you're going to look at the voltage that's being output while that's fully illuminated. That's a 12 volt bulb. So let me put this on here. I'm going to take my Milwaukee Power Plus, it's around 1200 RPMs. Let me get it in position before I do anything first. All right. I'm a little crammed here because I'm close with the camera, but you can see the voltage output there. That bulb will light up. I'm going to spin the generator with my hand. Wow, 14 and a half volts, no problem. Lighting up that lamp. Let's see what kind of current was going through there. All right, it's now set for current. Hopefully everything's in the view, looks like it. Let me hold this up out of the way. Let's put the bulb right there. You could monitor what the current is when it's putting out 14 and a half volts to that lamp. 3.12 amps and that's around 1200 RPM. This is a pretty good motor. I could probably work with some gears. Let me take this off. Alright, as you saw it worked well. Now the things I'm going to probably do with this in the future is either make another crank generator out of it or possibly a wind generator if I did do a wind generator, this would be mounted next to a larger heavy flywheel. So I keep the other flywheel right here and I'd have another one mounted next to it where the blades would be attached. So I get the speed up and I also have the momentum from the mass of the flywheels. Let's open this up now and see what it looks like. All right, move the camera a little higher up so you get more of a view. Let me take off these two nuts. All right, so now it's like that. Very nice. Push that to the side. Let's make a little spider just come running out of here. Look at that from the dump. Sorry, shouldn't be here. Make a little scratch there as a reference. All right. And let's see what we got here. All right. Pull that off. Here it goes. Nice fit. All right. Commutator. <sighs> Go away, spider. All right. Good bearing. Nothing wrong with that. This I'll put some 400 or 600 grit on before I put it back together. This should pull straight out. Yeah. Ah, that was the flange that just popped off the other side. That's the armature. There's the plate that fell on the floor. All right, this right here, this goes in the very bottom over there. 
I've seen enough of these in my day. And you can take a look inside. There's some huge magnets in there. Nice thick wall, over an eighth of an inch. Probably around four millimeters. Pretty damn good quality. This bearing. Good. Windings aren't burned. Everything looks good. So I made a good score on this. I'm going to just clean it up put it back together. I also got this out of the treadmill. A center tap transformer. 16 volt AC output. 115 volt AC input. And the current rating is one and a quarter ramps. I'll find use for that. This switch right here. On off. Got that out of the treadmill as well. Also came across a coffee maker. This is the entire plate on the bottom right here. All right, this was the plate where the coffee maker would sit on. And this part right here is where your heating element is inside. This works. I checked it. The heat, this part heats up and it keeps the pot hot and it keeps the pot nice and hot. This would go like that. So after the coffee is in the pot, it keeps it warm. Temperature sensor right here. Right over here is a heat exchange between the element where it heats the pot and this aluminum tube. They're connected together. The water flows through this tube and is heated. Really simple principle. Took the on and off switch here as well. And I'm sure I'll find use for this. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you for watching.